I'm here in KubeCon EU in Valencia, Spain, and I'm here with Tom. Hi. Tom is with Lightroom, and uh, Tom, go ahead and introduce yourself and let everyone know why you're here today. Sure, so aside from just walking around conferences all lettered up, uh, I also run developer relations for Lightroom, a developer of observability style stuff, startup, sorry. Um, we add logs, metrics, and traces to live applications in real time uh, from the IDE, uh, and we're here with all the other excellent people at KubeCon to talk observability and kind of the new trend of how to understand this new cloud native world that we're in. Nice. Um, Tom, what do you think are the biggest challenges as far as uh, troubleshooting a production system? Right. So when we moved from the monolith to the microservices, we ended up uh, breaking apart more than just our components into different servers. We also changed the way they interact between one another. And when you move from having the same uh, piece of code talk to the other, one piece of code talk to another piece of code on the same machine, when you uh, kind of counter countering networking uh, considerations. And in addition, when you try and build your system to be replicated across multiple servers at the same time, it's a bit of a different mindset than we're used to. And again, developers who are used to having a machine, a LAMP stack, running everything together at the same place, uh, are now uh, forced to work with stuff like pods and containers and other abstractions in the, in the world that they're not kind of used to. And while all of those things have very good ergonomics and very good APIs to use, it does make understanding what is talking to what very difficult. Uh, and yeah, so that's that. Yeah. So I remember back when I was dealing with a small system, and uh, that was a challenge in and of itself. Um, I think we tried to keep our logs together by timestamp or something, and sometimes things didn't interleave appropriately, and it was really difficult to right. trace messages from, from place to place. I imagine this gets a lot more difficult when you're scaling up and you have these huge clusters and you have all of these you know, replicas of all of your uh, systems and all of your uh, services out there. Um, what is the, a good solution for developers? How can they uh, solve this problem? Right, so the, the normal way of, of understanding what's happening inside a production system is, is logging, like you mentioned. You log everything in as much as possible, and then you end up with a bunch of logs dumped somewhere in storage that costs you a fortune to store and then to analyze. This solution doesn't, doesn't scale well in general. Logging everything all the time is very expensive, and also it's a bit of a mess. It's difficult to understand exactly what's happening well. Um, when we're doing When we're dealing with uh, getting um, a clear picture, out of, uh, out of your components. I think the best way is to integrate a few different types of agenda, a few different types of methodology, sorry. So first of all, you need to have some infrastructure monitoring, like, like you always do, to understand how the machine running your code is behaving. Then you need to have some sort of logging or telemetry to understand how your application is going. But I think one of the core components that people are missing, developers are missing, is what to do with information is not enough. When you're looking at something and you haven't dealt with that before, it's an unknown unknown, as Churchill, I think, used to say. And you need to have some way of working with these unknown unknowns. One way is creating very intricate logging queries. Uh, another is to use a tool like Lightrun that enables you to add uh, telemetry in real time where it wasn't before in a read-only way. Um, and again, there's a bunch of other tools in the market that focus on this niche, this niche of unknown unknowns. What to do when uh, uh, things hit the fan and you're not exactly sure what is happening just from looking at the existing telemetry. Uh, so infrastructure monitoring is important, a proper logging framework is important, and a way to deal with unknown unknowns. Excellent. So, one question for you. Does a developer, uh, let's say you've got uh, multiple teams involved because, you know, maybe an entire team is working on one service and maybe another team is working on another service. Right. And they could also be in different languages too, right? Uh, that's one of the advantages of being sure. able to, to do microservices. Do all of these teams need to learn a new system or um, make modifications to their code to make something like this work? So. I think that I'll, I'll kind of answer more broadly for a moment. So okay. generally speaking, in the industry, we see this movement of shift left. And shift left is a term from the SDLC, the software development lifecycle, where on the right side you have production considerations, what happens when you get something live. And on the left side you have development consideration, which is what happens when you develop your application, plan, test it, and so forth. Um, I think that we're seeing a move of many different things that used to be on the right-hand side, or just not on the left, to the left. So for example, HashiCorp with infrastructure as code, or generally every company that has infrastructure as code, has moved things to the left to allow developers some sort of access, versioning, rollback capabilities of that way. Sneak, which is, happens to be just across from us, does the same thing for security. You put dependency um, uh, investigation, uh, dependency analysis, sorry, uh, in front of the developer's eyes inside of GitHub, so they can basically do that security procedure, a very right 
kind of side of the SDLC consideration in development. And I think observability and monitoring as a whole should shift kind of in that direction as well. And I, we see that happening with a bunch of different things. First of all, developers already more aware of tracing to compilers, basically get a sense of the fact that things are complicated and we need new tools for that. And I think that to, to match the language between all the relevant uh, development teams, it's important to use development tools. And I think this whole ship left approach kind of gets there. Developers want to see stuff in their um, in the VCS, in GitHub, in the ID, perhaps in the simple CLI applications. If we can get things that are that used to be very GUI-based and kind of uh, less uh, developer-oriented to the language of developers, which are IDs, CLIs, and so forth, I think we'll see a lot of ease or a lot of kind of relaxation in, in production incidents because it won't be I need to talk to that person who has access to that thing in order to get the answers I need but I have the things in front of me in my language without having to context switch all the time and often without, to, without having to access somebody else's platforms which again I'm not familiar with it's not my language again, uh, yeah that makes total sense total sense and that would make it a lot easier for developers to would. stay within their comfort zone so to speak mm -hmm. um, and are comfortable with um, their language and their tool set. Um, you said two words, and I think this might be helpful for our audience. Sure. Observability and monitoring. Right. Can you tell us what the difference is between those? Definitely. So we usually like to, um, observability players as a whole, uh, obviously each have their own agenda of defining the term in a bit of a different way. But I think I found something that resonated with a few different vendors that I've talked to that define the term in a nice way. So monitoring is looking passively at the system and trying to analyze what is happening inside of it. Observability is building the system on the other end, it is a property of the system, uh, that tells us all we need to know about it by itself. So instead of just analyzing the, what the situation of the, the, the platform is, and then trying to kind of dive deep into whatever it is available for you from the monitoring tools, observability is already thinking before you started building the system, how to create it in a way so whatever question arises, you can answer it just from the information there. Um, and uh, sorry for plugging in light one again, but what we took is kind of a midway approach to observability in which uh, we allow the answer of these unknown unknowns dynamically. So when this unknown unknown occurs in a well-monitored system, you can almost plug and play light right now to answer those niches that are hard to, to account for. Nice. All right, there's two scenarios most developers find themselves in. Either they already have a project and they need to fix it, mm -hmm. or they're starting brand new on a project. Right. I think the majority of us already have something we're working with, or already have something that we need to you know, add features to, that kind of stuff. Let's say we have a project, we don't have observability, or at least not enough that we need. What right. is step one for me? What would I do? To make a system observable. Yes. Basically. Right. So um, I feel as if logs are just cluttering everybody's souls right now. So whenever I have to look at a, at a production system and try to understand which log is relevant for what I need, that is immediately a problem. And saying I want to change the complete logging methodology or uber parse the log into something manageable is a bit difficult. To get started, I think it's very important, and we I just ran this, um, I'm actually just running this developer productivity masterclass in a few weeks that talks a lot about that. If you want, join us at lightroom.com for that information. Um, it's about figuring out the hotspot of errors in your application, which can be done in, in, in numerous ways. You basically have to look at the logs or look at the production incident logs and try to understand what's, what's worse. And only focus on that part first. That will make the next incident easier, easing up the load of, of, of kind of your next moves in line. And there, I'd suggest trying to understand what information you're actually using in that portion and removing everything you're not. Because just doing that, just removing all the clutter to begin with and focusing on the specific lines that are interesting, perhaps doing a bit of refactoring for the login purposes, that would be an immense load off the person on call. Just that would be very useful. Uh, and then you can implement tools, uh, again, there's a bunch of tools in our market phone, the Lightman is one of them, to answer questions as they come along in that hotspot instead of relying on these kind of archaic, never-ending amount of logs stored in your storage. Right. I'm going to let you plug this. You mentioned a master class? Yes, yes, yes. So I already plugged it, so you really need it twice, Do which it is again. nice. Do right. it again. I think it's uh, important. <laughs> we're running a developer productivity master class, um, which is basically a panel of people from um, Google, Meta, Shopify, and JetBrains, and Lightrun, where we talk developer productivity, how to create a, such an organization and such a culture in your house, in your engineering organization. And it, this is a kind of, we talk shop. We talk about exactly what leaders and engineers in the, kind of in the trenches who have problems with developer productivity in-house, how we can do it in a way that both preserves developer experience, maintains developer happiness, and still answers the, to the SLOs. 
so I think it's a very interesting session. It's the second one we ran uh, 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 until now, and I'm very excited. So come join us, lightroom.com. There's a big register button on the top. We'll see you there. Awesome. Well, you've heard it here at KUCON EU, Valencia, Spain. You know why this is important now, and you have an action item, what to do, where to find more information, how to get this done. Definitely. Thank you, Tom. Thanks Thank for talking for, to us, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the floor. Likewise. Thank you very much, Melissa. All right.